feature which is uh, uh, exemplified by the saying that old habits die too hard. So the present standoff between Iran <coughs> and the United States is very much like, as uh, Kate pointed out, to the standoff in between 1951 and 1953 at the time of the nationalization of oil industry by uh, the democratic elected government of Dr. Mossadegh in Iran. And at that time, in those two years, there was an oil embargo by the United Kingdom against Iran selling its oil. We have an oil embargo now. In fact, by the United States, it's got a different form, but it is, in fact, an oil embargo. That Iran is not able to sell its oil because of secondary sanctions of all entities in, in, in planet. So, the fact is that there has always been a set of rules for the racist colonial powers and a different set of rules for the oppressed nations as far as the Western establishment and the corporate media is concerned. And I want to give two examples of this, very important examples. Special, UK special forces hijack an Iranian oil tanker mm. off the coast of Gibraltar mm. under the false pretext of EU sanctions against Syria. Now, in fact, we know that <coughs> behind the scenes, the EU <coughs> countries, the EU, has slammed the UK for doing exactly this. And that's why Jeremy Hunt comes and says, that we may offer you a return of your old tanker if you give us a <coughs> pledge that it's not going to go to Syria. So it's not anything charitable on the behalf of the UK, which acted at the behest of the United States, and in particular at the behest of the newcons in the United States. The only American official who expressed sadistic glee about the seizure of the tanker, the illegal seizure of tanker, or John Bolton. So this is regarded by the establishment and um, the corporate media as something legal that has been done, because it's against the so-called uh, EU sanction of Syria. But when Iranian speedboats approach a British tanker in the state of Holds. And according to the independent, the British tanker had entered into Iranian waters that the UK disputes. When this happens, they call power. So two different sets of rules. Just imagine, they have maritime piracy off the coast of Gibraltar, organized by the new cons and the UK special forces. So that's legal. But Iranian boats approaching a British tanker in their own water, that is foul. <laughs> so the second example, the second one is more significant, of course. So if you look at the media, the media says that the, UK, that the US has pulled out of the treaty, but it's Iran which is breaching the treaty. This is the new mantra. Iran is breaching the treaty and they could build a bomb in about a year. That's the new narrative, the Western narrative in the media. Now, just, just look at the facts. This was a treaty enshrined in international law because a UN Security Council resolution, then resolution 2231, enshrined in international law. The United States illegally violated the treaty and opted out, opted out on the quotation, pulled out on the quotation. Now, all the media, Western media says is that the US pulled out. <coughs> now, according to articles 26 and 36 of this treaty, which predicted exactly the scenario, Iran had the right to reduce its commitments if the Five plus one, then uh, the, the five permanent members of the UN Security Council plus Germany, if they renege on their commitments. Iran, in fact, could have done this within a few weeks after the pulling out 
by Trump in the treaty. So they could have done that last June. Iran waited 14 months, and what it received from the EU was lip service to the treaty. Yes, we have to be committed to it. Everyone should comply. But they allowed themselves to be bullied by the United States to violate the treaty because according to Article 36, according to the Article 26, I beg your pardon, EU, like the United States when it was a, a member, should have promoted and facilitated trade with Iran and banking exchanges with Iran. The EU could have done that and chose not to do it under the pressure of the United States. So it just did the bidding of the United States. The EU, to sum it up, has been the enabler of the secondary sanctions by the United States against Iran. It has been the enabler of the war drive of the United States against Iran. That's the fact that the media wants to hide because according to the treaty, they were obliged to stand up to the United States and they did it. So they are in violation of the treaty. The only country which has been in full compliance with the treaty has been Iran. Even now, its decision to reduce, in a very minor way, its commitments under the Iran nuclear treaty is consistent with that treaty. It's not gone beyond that treaty. It's consistent according to Articles 26 and 36. Russia and China are partially compliant. The US has pulled out illegally. The EU, the three EU three, are violating the treaty. So that, that, that's, that's the message that the uh, Western establishment and the media would not like to convey to the public. But that's, that's a fact. So to say that Iran is breaching the treaty and is going to be a problem, where the EU just pulled out, this is just having everything standing on its head, completely false. Now, uh, coming to my last point, coming to my last point, uh, Mr. Trump has threatened Iran with arbitration, maybe either tactical or full nuclear arsenal. But one thing is clear, you see, although the neocons have planned and prepared for a regime change in Iran in the past 40 years, and now they are in alliance not just with Israel, with which they have always been in alliance, but also in an ongoing alliance with Saudi Arabia, and UAE, they have been preparing this for four decades. At the same time, Iran has been preparing itself to defend itself against a military aggression by the United States. It has had 40 years to prepare for this. So we know that Iran has constructed underground tunnels <coughs> by the coast of the Persian Gulf and the Sea of Oman from the Iraqi border to the Pakistani border, full of missile capability. And Iran, of course, has got allies, not just in Iraq and Syria and Lebanon, but also in Yemen and Afghanistan. In the case of a military attack by the United States, even, even a nuclear attack by the United States, Iranian military guards and the paramilitary passage forces in Iraq which are ideologically driven against colonialism, and in particular American neocolonialism and colonialism, and the, the battle hardened in Syria and Iraq, they are going to stand and weather even a nuclear assault against Iran. This is for sure. That the United States, even with the aid of nuclear weapons, will not be able to obliterate Iran and he will not be able to win this military aggression against Iran. But of course, it will be a catastrophe, not just for Iran, but for the whole of the Middle East, which will go on play. I mean, 30% of the world oil passes through the state of Poland. 
that will be just a slideshow that this will be completely blocked. That will be a complete slideshow. All military sites of the US forces in the region, if they are forced to the military attack by, by, by the US against Iran, they will be targeted by Iran. And the whole Middle East will go into a major confrontation. And the repercussion for the world economy, for the living wages of ordinary people, for every aspect of life on this planet will be enormous and horrendous. Therefore, it is our duty to start building uh, a campaign because if Trump is not going to be able to wage his military attack in this round, and if he is elected for a second term, there is a much higher chance that they will wage a military attack against Iran, and that will make the Iraqi invasion just a sideshow. 